Hi, I'm Jill from June Taylor. Are you a cat lover or do you know someone who is? If so, we have a fun kit put together for you today. The kit includes these adorable cat themed fabrics and four Quiltishuko items. This placemat for your cat shaped like a fish is one of them. It works perfectly with a small little dish. And then these three mug mats to go with them. Mug mats are the perfect size to use in the morning with your coffee and bagel or a cup of soup or even for a snack. This one says, you had me at meow. And this one says, please don't let the cat out no matter what it tells you. And this one says, cat hair don't care. The Cat Lover Kit is going to include everything that you need to make these items, including these four color instruction sheets, which tells you exactly what to cut and out of what fabric. And then, of course, all the fabrics that you need are included as well. And then the three mug mats have sayings to them. Those are already printed and those are included. We also have the printed batting to make the three mug mats. This is our 80-20 cotton batting with the patterns printed on them. And then for the cat place mat, we actually have a fusible batting, and this is a polyester batting that we've printed onto. It's very washable because we know that maybe your pet might spill water or food on it, so we wanted to make sure we supplied you a substrate that would last through many washings. On today's segment, we're going to go through the construction process of the place mats, and we're also going to show you the steps in this mug mat as well. So you'll have a great idea of how quickly these projects can go together. To begin, we're going to cut our backing fabric according to the instructions, and then we'll turn that over and take our fish place mat, position it on top, making sure that the backing fabric is wider than the fish placemat. And we're gonna turn that over one more time and we are going to press. We're gonna to press to fuse it in place by using our iron on a wool setting. And we wanna use um, a, a few seconds in each area and then we want one good overall press. And that will basically fuse the backing fabric to the back side of the fish placemat. Let's pull this up toward the center so that you can see that this is actually now fused down. And then we're going to flip this over like this, and we are going to trim all the way around the outside edge of our fish placemat. I've got that done here. So this is the back side, and this is the front side. And now we're going to begin to do our piecing. So the first thing we do is cut all our fabrics according to the instructions. We take our fabrics, and next step is before you cut them, if you have starch, it's nice to get them a little bit stiffer. As we construct this cat placemat, we're actually gonna be finger pressing. So starching of your fabrics works really, really well. I like to starch before I cut them and then even after. Starch Savvy is a great product. It is fragrance free and with every application you give it makes your fabrics just a little bit stiffer and easier to sew. Our fabrics are cut and starched. We're going to take number one piece of fabric and lay it on number one on the placemat like this. And then we're going to take piece two and right sides together against piece one right along the placement line here. This is a placement line, not a sewing line. So right sides together, we're going to pin this in place like this, and then we are going to sew right along here in a scant quarter inch seam allowance. All right, let's remove the pins and snip the threads and when I open this up, it should land right along the next placement line. And now we're going to finger press that seam open. Because the fabrics are starched and nice and stiff, it's easy to finger press and it lands perfectly 
onto the next placement line. Step three is next. So we're going to take piece number three, right sides together along piece number one, right on the placement line, pin into place, and sew in a scant quarter inch seam allowance. Remove our pins and flip this over and finger press that seam allowance open. I just flip over to the back. You can see that these are the two seams that we've already sewn. So when you sew on the front, you sew all the way through each of the fabrics, through the batting, and through the backing. That's why it's called quilt as you go, because you're actually quilting it as you put the top together. We're going to complete the rest of our pet placemat following the numbers, always putting right sides together and on the placement line and sewing in a scant quarter inch seam allowance. We're going to do four, five, the rest of this and the outside edges. Alright, piece 9 is now sewn. We're going to flip that open and finger press. Let's turn this over and take a look on the back. You can see all of our stitching lines here. All our quilting is done. And I'll turn it back over to the front. And we're going to add on 10, 11, 12, and 13. We're going to add piece 10. We want to make sure that our cat's faces are pointing up. So we can lay that along here and then turn it right sides together and pin into place. And then we'll put piece 11 down. And again, you wanna make sure that the cat heads will come in the right direction. So if you put right sides together, you could just test it by flipping it over to make sure it's correct. And it is. So we'll pin this into place and stitch. Piece 13 is sewn on. We'll take our pins out and we can finger press this open. But now that our entire placemat is covered, we are able to take the iron and really give this a good press. So you want to start at the center and press all those seam allowances flat and open. 
You can even give it a little steam at this point. The next step is we're going to turn it over and we're going to trim right around the edge of the fish as we did in the second step. Our cutting is complete, so this is what the front looks like and this is what the back looks like. And we'll give it one final press before our binding. Our binding strips are cut and they are cut on a bias like this so that there's a lot of stretch to it. So we need two of these binding strips we have here. And what we're going to do is lay one of them right side up take the other, turn it over so we have right sides together. And what we want to do is line up our point here and here and sew in a diagonal right here. So right where this piece comes to an end and here. We're going to put our pin in and make a mark from this corner to here and we're gonna sew right along there. Take our pin out, and I'll fold this over like this, and we can press this to one side. And then we're gonna go back to the cutting board and we're going to trim these to a quarter of an inch. And we'll press that open. We can press this open or press the seams toward one side and then we're going to add one more bias binding strip to this so that we have 60 full inches of bias binding. Now we're going to press our binding in half wrong sides together and then on this end what we're going to do on this angled end is press this under about a quarter of an inch like this on the short end, and then bring it back over the way you had it with wrong sides together. And we will begin with our binding by sewing about right here. So we'll take our placemat and bring it up, and we're going to leave this tail hanging open, and we'll start pinning about right here. and. My pin will be my starting point, and you can either pin the binding in place like we're doing here, or you can use these clips and clip your binding in place. We're gonna do a lot of pivoting. As we sew around in a quarter inch seam allowance, we're gonna do a lot of pivoting. So pin or clip your binding on, leaving this little tail free. Okay, we've got our binding strip secured on our fish. We left this little tail of the binding open, and we're going to basically sew in a quarter of an inch all the way around the outside edge of the fish, but we're gonna stop at the tail because I wanna show you how to miter this corner. So let's take it out of the machine because we did our back tacking. I stopped a quarter of an inch from the edge in. I'm going to take this up at an angle like that and then bring this back over itself like this. And we will pin that in place. And then I'm going to begin to sew from this raw edge 
and continue on in a quarter of an inch. see how that is going to make a nice mitered corner there. And then we're going to go continue to sew on and when we get to this point right here, I'm going to fold this back at a 45 degree angle like this and then fold it down over itself and pin into place. And then we're going to begin sewing right here on this raw edge and we're going to finish bringing our binding all the way around. So now what we're going to do is we have a little bit of sewing around this side of the tail. Let's take our pin out, check our miter, and that looks good. Now we've got this section of the binding here and we have our little flap that we started with. So what we're going to do is bring this around and we're going to pin this in place like this. And then we're going to bring this piece of binding around here and hide this, let's trim this down and hide this right inside here. And then what I'm going to do, and I'll, I'll place this as I'm sewing it, we're gonna just continue sewing right around the edge of the fish. Okay, so we're back at the machine and we're gonna continue on with our binding. We always want to back tack, and if you have um, the needle down position on your machine, that would be good to use at this point as well. And we're gonna continue to sew in a quarter inch seam allowance, and feel free to keep the needle down and pivot and continue sewing and pivoting because you're coming around some a little bit of a rounded area here. So needle down, pivot, and sew in a quarter inch. And now that it's coming up to the opening with the angle, I'm going to tuck my binding strip and hide it underneath. There we go. And we're just going to sew completely around the edge of our fish right back to where we started and use a quarter inch seam allowance and back tack at the end. Now let's trim this little tail like that and then we can actually take our binding from the front over to the back like this and you can hand stitch in place. You can also machine stitch. I actually like the look of the, the hand stitch a little bit better because it's, it, hides, it hides a little bit better. But because you've used this bias cut binding it goes around these rounded areas so nicely. So again, I would press the binding and hand stitch it in place. And let's take a look at those corners again. So these will come around. I'll show you the, how it would look on the front. And you're just gonna fold those around to the back. And when you hand stitch, you'll go like this and like that. And you'll hand stitch that miter right into place. Let's give it one final press and we are done with our fish placemat. We're going to start with one of our little mug mats today and what you want to do is cut around the edge of the mug mat leaving a quarter of an inch of batting on all four sides like we've done here. And then we're going to lay this on the back side of the backing fabric. So the correct side or the pretty side is on the bottom and the reverse side is on top and we're going to secure this batting to the wrong side of the backing. 
If you want, you can use our quilt basting spray to do that. This is a basically an adhesive that will secure the batting to the fabric. You always want to cover your area before you press and you always want to spray the batting, not the backing. So we've done that, and now my mug mat is secured to the backing. If you don't have quilt basting spray, you can just pin this in place. We starch our fabrics before we cut, and we can also use Quilter Starch Savvy after our pieces are cut, because this is going to only further assist us in finger pressing. And you can even starch that statement block. So we're ready to begin. Let's put the statement block, which is number one, in the center of the, the mug mat at number one. Lay that down. And then piece number two is a triangle. And we're going to put that right sides together against piece number one and pin it in place. And we'll sew through all layers in a quarter inch seam allowance. So you're going to throw, sew through the triangle, the statement block, um, the batting and the backing all in a quarter inch seam allowance. And then we're going to remove the pin and flip that triangle open and finger press. Starching will help that finger pressing and you can see it lands right on the line which is where it should. Now we're going to add pieces three, four, and five and work in the same manner until we get to the outside edge of our block. So we're always going to be aligning our pieces with the line and sewing in a quarter inch seam allowance. We've got our mug mat done, everything is finger pressed open, and now we are ready to do the self binding. When we began, we left a quarter of an inch of batting around all four sides of our mug mat. Now we're going to cut our backing fabric to one inch, so it'll go one inch all the way around all four sides from the batting to the outer edge for our backing. Now we're going to begin by folding up to the edge of the batting and folding one more time and either pin or clip that in place. So again, fold toward the batting and one additional time and you will have created what we call self binding. Let me put one more clip in here so that you can see how we are going to turn the corner. So when you get to the corner, you'll still have your fold. And what you're gonna do is make a 45 degree angle, kind of finger press that and fold down to the batting and fold one more time. By doing that, you're gonna create a miter at that corner, a miter or a 45 degree angle at that corner and you're going to be able to pivot with your machine when you begin stitching it. So let's go ahead and put our clips in and get our binding secure, pivoting at the corner. Once we sew along here and pivot at that corner, we will have a perfect binding around all edges. We're going to sew close to the folded edge of the mug mat. Now that our sewing is done, we can give our mug mat a good press. The binding is perfect. Our mitered corners all look great. And that one stitch at the corner where we pivoted really makes for a professionally finished result. And we're ready to go. We get our mug out and we're ready to have our cup of tea or soup or cup of coffee. Our fish place mat is done and we've completed one of the mug mats. Now we can finish the other two. And if you're giving this as a gift, a great idea is to take the finished mug mat, roll it up, put it in a mug like this, add some treats, maybe a drink mix, a recipe, put it in some clear wrap and tie a bow around it, and you've got the perfect gift. So I hope you've enjoyed this segment today and that you've made your cat happy and you have a fun mug mat for each day of the week.